Hi, this is Andrea Hendricks, and I want to talk to you about Section 4.3, an application of exponents, which is scientific notation. In this section, we're going to talk about expressing numbers in scientific notation, converting numbers in scientific notation to numbers without exponents, and using scientific notation in calculations. If you've taken a chemistry class or biology class and you've talked about atoms or molecules, things that are very small, or if you take an astronomy and studied the distances from the sun to the planets, um, which include numbers that are very, very large, you have probably encountered scientific notation before. Um, but that's basically what we're talking about, is um, how to express numbers that are really, really large or really, really small in a way that we can actually work with them. And before we get into that, let's just review a few things. Um, powers of 10. Do you remember that if we have 10 to the 0, that's equal to 1, right? 10 to the 1st is equal to 10. 10 squared is 10 times 10, or 100. 10 to the 3rd is 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000. Do you remember the rule here, basically, that the power on the 10 denotes really how many zeros are going to follow the 1. Um, the only ex exception to that is if we have negative exponents, right, a 10 to the negative 1 is 1 tenth, or we can also write that as 0 0.1. Or if we have 10 to the negative 2, that's 1 over 10 squared, or 1 over 100, and 1 over 100 is the same thing as 0 0.01. Right, so if it's a negative exponent, um, it indicates um, how many places to the left of the one the decimal point is going to be. So like um, here is 10 to the negative 1, we have to move just to the left of the 1 one time <clears throat> for the decimal point. 10 to the negative 2 is we're moving to the left two times to get to the decimal point. Um, the place value of digits in a number. I'm just going to write a huge number down here, and I'm not really even going to be, but that specific will just have a nice rounded number here. Um, do you remember something like this? We have ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. Then millions, ten millions, hundred millions, then billions, ten billion, hundred billion, and then trillion. So every digit represents a power of ten, right? As we move to the left in a number, we're getting larger by a power of ten. Of course, if we moved to the right, I'll just say zero zero three four, this is the tenths the hundredths, the thousandths, the ten thousandths, so it's getting smaller by power of ten. Um, another thing to review is what happens when you multiply a number by a power of ten. Let's say if I multiply five times one hundred, that would become five hundred, right? Or however many zeros we had in the one hundred is how many zeros we added to this number, or really how many places we move to the right in the decimal point. Like if we had 5.14 and we multiply by 100, that's going to move our decimal point two places to the right to just get 514. If we have 6.371 and we multiply by 1000, we're going to move three places to the right to get 6,371, okay? So multiplying by a power of 10 increases a number, obviously, but it will move the decimal point in the number to the right by the number of zeros that you have in the power of 10. Okay, so forgetting all that for just a minute, let's define what I mean by scientific notation. Scientific notation is a number of the form a times 10 to the n, where the absolute value of a, so this number a, um, is greater than or equal to 1, 
and less than 10. A way we can write that is to say that 1 has to be less than or equal to the absolute value of a, which is less than 10. The absolute value is there to denote that a could be positive or negative, but the absolute value of that has to be between 1 and 10. And n is an integer. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So here are, are some examples of numbers that are possibly in scientific notation or not. I want you to look at them and determine if they are. If I have 1.2 times 10 to the fifth, that fits our pattern because a 1.2 is between the 1 and 10, and we have an integer for the exponent. So yes, this is in scientific notation. 4.56 times 10 to the negative 3. Sure, negative 3 is an integer. 4.56 is between 1 and 10, so that is in scientific notation. Negative 7.8 times 10 squared. That is in scientific notation because if we take the absolute value of negative 7.8, we get a positive 7.8, which is between the 1 and the 10, so yes. 72.3 times 10 to the 6. This is not in scientific notation. Do you know why? Yeah, it is because 72.3 is larger than 10, so it doesn't fit our model that we have to go on. So let's look at some numbers and how we can write them in scientific notation. So we have to rewrite these numbers as a times 10 to the n. So the very first thing that you need to represent or understand is that the de where the decimal point is in the number. If there's not a, num a decimal point in the number that's given, it's always at the n, right? because point zero 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 and so on. We have 82,350 and I want to convert that to scientific notation. I have to first find within this number a number between 1 and 10 and that always means to move to the digit, <laughs> the first digit that is less than 10. So in this case 8. Put the decimal point there. So we're going to convert this to 8.235, I don't really have to write that zero there, now times 10 to some power. My power of 10 has to indicate the number of decimal places that I moved. Since I moved 1, 2, 3, 4, I have to put a power of 4 there because I was moving to the left. In other words, the number is large, right, so it has to indicate the power of 10 that I moved. Now if I have point zero 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 seven, okay, that number is virtually nothing, right? Um, it's so small that if you used it on your calculator you're going to get very little unless you have scientific notation on the calculator. So what I would have to do is find a number within this number that lies between 1 and 10. So we move our decimal point until we get to a number that lies between 1 and 10 and that's always going to be to the left. So here it is, 7 point. So we'll just put 7 times 10 and then our exponent has to indicate the number of places that we moved. So notice that I moved 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 decimal places. But I was moving to the right which indicates smaller, smaller, and smaller. So I have to use a negative exponent, which is 7 times 10 to the negative 7. So here's a good rule of thumb. If your power of 10 is larger than 1, then your number is going to be greater than 10. If your exponent is a negative power, then the number is going to be less than 1. That's going to be a decimal value. So here is an example again, 7.2 times 10 to the fifth. This is kind of what I was talking about on the last screen. What happens when you multiply by a power of 10? Well, it moves the decimal point, the number of places as indicated by the number of zeros in the number. Well, that's what that exponent tells us, right? Five places that it's going to move the decimal point. So we can write our 7.2 if you like. And then since the power is positive, we're going to move to the right to indicate that we're getting bigger. So we're going to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you can put a decimal point there if you like, but then we're going to fill in with zeros. So this number is really, what, 720 
thousand. And you can check this on the calculator and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. 8.9 times 10 to the negative 5. So that negative 5 indicates that this number is very small. It is less than 1. So we're going to have to move our decimal point to the left to make it smaller. So if we write down 8.9, this time move to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then fill in with zeros before that number. So this number is really 0.000089. Okay. So large numbers have positive powers. Really, really small numbers have negative powers on the 10. Now, I'm going to give you some context here, some real life numbers to th worry about, think about. Um, I googled the U.S. and world population, so you can find a population clock that you can go to. Um, obviously, this number is changing moment by moment, but the U.S. population, if you've heard in the news recently, we just went over 300 million. So right now, we're at 300 million, 20,119. The world population, let me see if I can get this, that's hundreds, thousands, millions, billions. So the world population is 6 billion. 551,516,703. So I want us just to write these numbers in scientific notation. For the point of these, let's just kind of round these off. Let's say that this is 300 million. And let's round the world population off to 6 billion, 550, Two thousand. Okay, so if we want to write three hundred million in scientific notation, it's a really large number. Remember, we have to find a number between one and ten within that, so we can move our decimal point until we get there, and that is going to be right here to the right of the three. So it's going to be three times ten. Now, how many zeros did we move? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's 3 times 10 to the 8th. So again, remember what that number means. It means 3 followed by 8 zeros. If I want to write 6,552,000,000 in scientific notation, then I have to find a number between the 1 and the 10, which is here. And I'll write all those digits down. So that's 6.552 times 10 to, now I can't just write the number of zeros because I went beyond the number of zeros to get to the digit between 1 and 10. So I have to count those digits also in my power. So I moved over 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So six point five five two times ten to the ninth power. Okay. Now I'm going to give you this number. See, first of all, if you can even read what that number is, I got this off the internet as well. Let's see. So this is hundreds, thousands millions, billions, and trillions. Do you know what this number is? So this is 8 trillion, 3 billion, 897 million, 406 thousand, 911 dollars and 24 cents. This is the outstanding public debt. Now, oh, some of this money is owed to government entities and stuff like that, so we're not going to really worry about where all this money goes, but it is a U.S. outstanding public debt. So if I wanted to write this number in scientific notation, and again, let's just round it off to be nice and pretty, so we'll write it as $8 trillion. I have to make sure I get enough zeros in here. Okay. So 8 trillion in scientific notation would be 
find a number between 1 and 10, so that would be the 8, right? Times 10 to the, how many places did we move? So 1, 2, 3, and when I say how many places did we move, how many places did we move the decimal point? That is from the original number to the number that's between 1 and 10. So we moved it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 times. Okay? 8 times 10 to the 12th. That would be how to represent our outstanding public debt. Now, here's a couple of questions where we can do some calculations with scientific notation. If I asked, how much money would the government collect if all 300 million people paid them $5,000? So, here's the problem to look at. 300 million, we've already looked at, is 3 times 10 to the 8th. 5,000 is 5 times 10 to the 3rd, right? Because here's a decimal point. Move it three places to get between the 1 and the 10. So if we multiply 3 times 10 to the 8th times 5 times 10 to the 3rd, we can use some of the properties of exponents to do this because notice that we have like bases. So this is really 3 times 5 times 10 to the 8th times 10 to the 3rd. Well, we know 3 times 5 is 15. And what rule can we use here? 10 to the 8th times 10 to the 3rd is 10 to the 11th, right? We're multiplying like bases so we can add the exponents. Well, 15 is really not in scientific notation, right? It is larger than 10, so we really have to write that as 1.5 times 10 to the first power, right? Because I moved the decimal point one time, times 10 to the 11th. So this would become 1.5 times 10 to the 12th. Well, what is 1.5 times 10 to the 12th? So if we convert that to a number not in scientific notation, we have the 1.5, but we have to move the decimal point 12 places to the right. So we move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and fill in with zeros. Okay, so that would be, let me try to get the right digit here. So that looks like that would be one trillion five hundred billion dollars. So if all three hundred million people paid the government five thousand dollars, they would collect one trillion five hundred billion dollars, which is still not enough to cover the national debt. Okay. So here's another question. How much money would each person in the U.S. have to pay to erase the outstanding debt? Now, I know it's $8 trillion, but I'm going to use a 9 just to illustrate this concept just so it makes the numbers a little bit easier. But you can do this on your own, and we'll do it in just a minute with the calculator. Um, so $9 trillion is, we've already talked about this, 9 times 10 to the 12th. 300 million would be 3 times 10 to the 8th. So the way that we could do this problem is that we can actually divide these, right? So if I wanted to do 9 times 10 to the 12th divided by 3 times 10 to the 8th, I can really think of this as 9 over 3 times 10 to the 12th over 10 to the 8th. And you can see why I made this easier putting the 9 here. So that would make it 9 divided by 3 is 3, and then the powers of Exponents, or rules for the exponents, we know 10 to the 12th divided by 10 to the 8th is 10 to the 4th. So what is 3 times 10 to the 4th? 3 times 10 to the 4th means to write a 3 and move the decimal point 4 places to the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So that would be about $30,000 a piece we'd have to pay to erase the national debt. Okay? Depressing, huh? <laughs> I'm not trying to depress you, but just to give you some context of numbers. Um, now let me show you how you can use the calculator to do some scientific notation and just to understand what those numbers mean when you see the display. Um, I actually went to the calculator, and just so you can see this again, um, on mode, 
you have normal mode, scientific, notation, and then engineering. So I moved my arrow, it's normally on normal, I moved it to the right to put it in scientific notation so that all my digits here would display in scientific notation just to see that. And so and then I entered this number, let's see here, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So this is um, hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, right? That's nine billion. And so to write that in scientific notation, it's nine E nine. Okay, that's what the calculator will display. So what does a nine E nine mean? Um, let's see here. The nine E to the nine, you know what I'm going to need to do is, um, well, I need to copy it and put it in the screen, but nine E to the nine is our way of saying scientific notation. When you see 9e9, that e really represents times 10 to the power of. So 9e9 is 9 times 10 to the power of 9. I entered 0 .0000043, converted that to scientific notation as 4.3e negative 6. So 4.3e negative 6 really means 4.3 times 10 to the negative 6. So, if you wanted to enter a number in scientific notation, you have one of two ways to do it. You can enter something like 1.5, and the scientific notation is this EE -E button. So, if you do second in the comma, then you can do 6, and that would be the way to enter 1.5 times 10 to the 6. You can also do it as 1.5 times 10 to the power of 6. Okay, that's the same thing as you can see. Now if you wanted to find out what we just did, the national debt, so if we use something like our 8 trillion divided by 300 million, so if we wanted to do that, our 8 trillion was 8 times 10 to the 12th, right? So we can enter that divided by our 300 million was 3 times 10 to the power of 8 and enter. So it's 2.66666 and on e to the 4, which means times 10 to the 4. So if you can round that 2.6667 times e to the 4th would be about $26,667. Okay, so um, that's pretty much all you need to know for section 4.3. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me at all. Thank you.